Welcome to yet another episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. There's been a lot of Tuesdays recently, James. Today's episode is about saddle fore and aft. Often referred to as saddle layback or saddle setback. Saddle fore and aft. What is it? It's very simple really, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the horizontal placement of the saddle in space. We use the bottom bracket as a, as a reference point. So the, the fore aft is usually measured in centimeters uh, and it's a basically the, the, the difference between the nose of the saddle and a vertical line drawn up through the bottom bracket. It refers to exactly basically where the, where the saddle is placed in space. This is an element of saddle setback that I find uh, more problematic than, than, than anything else is, is having it too far forward. There are a number of reasons why riders run the saddle too far forward. The most common one I tend to find is that the, the reach is too long to the, of the bike and as a result so the rider pushes the saddle forward uh, in order to reduce the reach of the bike. Uh, don't do that. Essentially what happens is when you run the saddle too far forward it, it disrupts the centre of mass, it disrupts your weight distribution on the bicycle. And this is essentially how I use, uh, it's one of the ways I use uh, saddle setback in, in bike fitting. So when you run the saddle further forward, all you're going to do, or a lot of the time, you're going to transfer a lot of the weight into the front of the bicycle. So quite often, riders end up with numb hands, neck and shoulder issues, that kind of stuff. It's very popular in racing circles to, to run the saddle very far forward as a means of opening up the hips. There are a lot of other ways of opening up the hips, reducing crank length, reducing reach, uh, increasing stance. Uh, so, so yeah. Generally speaking, I, I, I would I would discourage anyone from from pushing the saddle really far forward as a means of reducing the reach. Uh, try and do it at the front end. If you've run out of ways to, to reduce it at the front end, it's probably an indication your bike's too big. So, a, a far less common issue that, that I encounter is, is the saddle being too far back. Uh, more often than not, it's usually as a result of the saddle simply having slipped in the seat post. Uh, I think the only real issue with, with having the saddle too far back, well, there are a couple of issues. First and foremost, it, it has the potential to increase the reach uh, quite dramatically. So, if the saddle's slammed really far back on the rails, it'll increase the reach a lot. But furthermore, it, it also intends to, it, it tends to impinge the hips which can uh, make it more difficult for a rider to get over the top of the pedal strike, particularly uh, individuals who are a little bit tight through the hips. So I'm talking about individuals who sit at desks a lot of the time, uh, people sort of above the age of 35 tend to be slightly tighter in the hips. I guess it depends on, on, your, on your lifestyle and, and your, your general physiology, but uh, that's, that's, that's a major issue really of having the saddle too far back. It can actually impact your pedaling dynamic and your pedaling efficiency. I think the whole concept of opening up the hips is, is typically been applied in, uh, to racing cyclists and, and race bikes. Uh, it's a means of, it, it tends to improve hip function. So going back to what we were talking about when the saddle's too far back, it tends to uh, make life more difficult for to get over the top of the pedal stroke. Running further forward does generally improve hip function. It tends to open the hips up. Uh, what that means is that your pedaling efficiency can improve. I think what it's important to understand, it's important to consider that you, you don't want to be uh, opening up the hips at the expense of uh, weight distribution. And furthermore, uh, there are a number of other ways of opening up the hips, as I, as I explained earlier on. But there are a number of ways of, of overcoming physiological challenges in bike fitting. Uh, and I think you just, just slamming the saddle really far forward as a means of opening up the hips. I, I kind of feel like has it tends to have ramifications elsewhere. It's also worth noting that when you change the saddle fore aft, it influences saddle height. So the further forward, if you run the saddle further forward, you have to raise the saddle height. Uh, if you run further back, you tend to have to lower it a little bit. It's it's a ratio roughly of one to three. When you run the saddle further forward, you probably need to raise it a little bit. When you run when you run it further back you'll probably need to drop it a little bit. So there's a few videos online of people explaining how to set your saddle fore and aft using a method where they dangle a plumb line from your knee. What's that all about and does it work? Is there a formulaic way to set it? So the COPS method, COPS is uh, knee over pedal spindle, is, is something derived from the 1970s. And I think if it, it basically uh, refers to you, you drop a plumb line off of the off of a certain area of the knee. There can be there are a number of different uh, landmarks that have been used over the years, and at a certain point in the pedal stroke, uh, you it should dissect the pedal axle. 
And, and I guess the problem with this is it doesn't take into consideration uh, rider physiology. Uh, furthermore, there are a number of uh, styles of bicycle that will that won't really allow for cops. So if you think about a triathlon bike, for example, where the saddle is comparatively much much further forward, uh, the idea being to open up the hips, but also to make the pedaling motion a bit more cyclic, like a, like running. Um, so it's less of a less of a shock moving into the run from 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 the road from the road from from the bike. Furthermore, you know, you, you couldn't apply it to something like a, a, a recumbent bike. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I, I feel it's more more a kind of generalisation and rule of thumb than, than anything else. Uh, and uh, it's not something I ever use. Uh, furthermore, if a bike fitter is using that in your bike fit, run away. So I, I'm not going to say give a surefire way of setting it yourself because unfortunately there are far too many uh, variables involved in, in setting saddle setback. But what I want to do is get across some of the things that you need to take into consideration. So first and foremost, uh, I, I would probably start with this, and, and one thing I do want to reiterate actually is that saddle setback is something that I find myself not really changing unless the needs of the rider dictate it. And so what's a good, a good starting point, well, the best starting point really with a saddle is to run it slap bang in the middle of the rails, all right? Start, start from there. Um, on the grounds that if you run, sorry, if you run a saddle very far forward on the rails, it does a couple of things. Firstly, it, it, can, it can put quite a lot of strain through the rails and, and when you sit on it, the saddle will actually slightly dip, nose down. Furthermore, if you have it on the back of the rails, when you sit on it, the saddle will kind of point nose up, you, you, have, you run the risk of basically bending the saddle rail. So, you know, a lot of saddles have a, uh, most saddle rails have a limit to where you can set them. I personally would almost always try to aim to be for the middle of that limit as a starting point. So we need to take in, so sometimes you need to think about the individual. So individuals with long torsos, so people like me, I'm built like a sausage dog, with very short legs and very long back, tend to need more saddle setback. Individuals with similar, the same needs are, Individuals with large upper body mass, I mean, rugby players, individuals with large heads, well endowed women. Basically all of these individuals are going to need more saddle setback to offload that weight. There tends to be the need for an accompaniment of reduced reach and reduced handlebar drop as well to, to offload that weight. In contrast to that, a, a particularly problematic shape, and historically this has been uh, aimed at, at female cyclists, but actually there are quite a lot of men with this, with this trait, is individuals with a very short torso and comparatively longer legs. Now, this is an individual that is predisposed to being stretched out on a bicycle, and I find uh, that sort of uh, build, so you've got a short torso, long leg, tends to need far less saddle setback in order to get their center of mass in between the two wheels. And there are handling ramifications to this. Uh, so, in, so when you've got a short torso, you might actually find the need to uh, fit a, a set back seat post. This is something we probably ought to um, to highlight in this video: is that there are, is that seat posts have different levels of setback. Yeah, here you've got inline, 15 mil, 25 mil, and you know. Depending on the rider's physiology, you might need any one of these. And I guess, uh, furthermore, using a different seat post is another way of uh, enabling you to get the saddle slap bang in the middle of the rail so that you don't excessively uh, or asymmetrically load the saddle. Uh, but riders with short torsos, a lot of ladies uh, tend to need inline post to get that saddle further forward. And then, like I say, you, know, you then end up having the, the benefit of opening up the hips and this, that, and the other. In conclusion, saddle setback is really all about the needs of the individual. If you've got impinged hips or a very short torso, run it further forward. If you, are, if you have a massive head, run it further back. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do a little bonus segment in this video, which is how do you measure your saddle setback if you're at home? You will need two things. A bicycle and tape measure. Put the rear wheel against the wall, measure from the wall to the nose of the saddle, and then measure from the wall to the centre of the bottom bracket. Subtract the two, that's a saddle setback. So that concludes our episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays on saddle, on saddle, saddle setback. Now a lot of you requested how to set your saddle setback. 
we couldn't make that video because there isn't a formulaic way to do it. I can't stress enough what James was trying to get across earlier, that it's down to your physiology. Look at yourself, look at the kind of human that you are, and make your changes based on that. Like with a lot of things in bike fit, there is no formulaic way. But certainly with saddle setback, it's one of the less dangerous things to experiment with. So do feel free to experiment with it. Thank you as always for watching. I'm going to put a link down below if you'd like to book a fit with James. Equally, if you have any comments or questions, put them down below and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.